Have you ever pondered how the world's most visited museum, the iconic Louvre, came to be? Our tale begins in the late 12th century under the reign of Philip II. Picture a time when the heart of Paris was not bustling with artists and lovers, but fortified for protection. The Louvre, in its inaugural form, was not a museum but a fortress, a robust edifice built to guard the city from potential invaders. Its original purpose was far from the artistic haven we know today. Fast forward to the 14th century and the Louvre underwent a significant transformation under Charles V. The robust fortress shed its battle-hardened guise and donned the splendor of a royal palace. Its imposing walls, once a symbol of resistance, morphed into the epitome of regal grandeur, housing the French monarchy in the heart of Paris. Now, let's step into the era of the Renaissance, a period that sparked a cultural revival across Europe. Francis I, an ardent patron of the arts and sciences, ascended the throne. His reign brought about a significant shift in the Louvre's identity. He introduced a myriad of Italian works of art into the palace, transforming it into an artistic powerhouse. Among these treasures was a portrait that would become the face of the Louvre, the enigmatic Mona Lisa, painted by the renowned Leonardo da Vinci. From a fortress to a royal palace, the Louvre's metamorphosis didn't stop here. Its journey continued and it went on to become a beacon of art and culture, a testament to the transformative power of time. The evolution of the Louvre is a fascinating tale of changing eras, shifting purposes and the enduring power of art. The Louvre, initially built for defense, evolved over centuries into a symbol of royal opulence and a home for artistic wonders. But when did this royal residence transform into a public museum, a treasure trove of art and history for the world to admire? The transformation began in the wake of the French Revolution towards the end of the 18th century. As the winds of change swept across France, the Louvre, once a symbol of royal power, was transformed into a public museum. This was a symbol of the New Republic's commitment to education and enlightenment. On August 10, 1793, the Louvre opened its doors to the public for the first time. Initially, it was home to a modest collection of just over 500 paintings and sculptures, most of which were seized royal and church property. The museum's collection expanded dramatically under the rule of Napoleon Bonaparte. As his armies swept across Europe, they brought back a wealth of art and antiquities to add to the Louvre's collection. Under his reign, the museum was renamed the Musée Napoleon, and its collections grew to include over 35,000 works of art, covering everything from Egyptian antiquities to Roman sculptures. However, with Napoleon's downfall, many of these treasures were returned to their countries of origin, and the museum was once again renamed the Louvre. Yet the desire to expand the collection did not wane. Throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, the museum continued to grow, acquiring works from around the globe. The Louvre's collection today is a testament to this relentless pursuit of art and knowledge, a truly international collection spanning thousands of years and countless cultures. From a symbol of monarchy to a beacon of culture and enlightenment, the Louvre's journey is as fascinating as the artworks it houses. As we delve deeper into the museum's halls, we will uncover some of the iconic masterpieces that call the Louvre home, each with its own story to tell. But that is a tale for another time. For now, we leave you with this thought. What stories might these ancient walls share if they could speak? How many tales of power, revolution, and the unquenchable thirst for knowledge are etched into the stone? What are some of the masterpieces that make the Louvre a must-visit destination for art enthusiasts worldwide? Well, let's delve into the heart of this artistic haven. The most famous painting in the world, the enigmatic Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci, resides here. Behind her elusive smile lies a world of mystery and intrigue that has captivated audiences for centuries. Next, we have the Venus de Milo, an ancient Greek statue that embodies the ideal of feminine beauty. Despite her missing arms, she stands as a testament to the timeless allure of classical art. And who can overlook the winged victory of Samothrace? This majestic sculpture of the Greek goddess of victory, Nike, is a sight to behold. Her dynamic pose and detailed drapery work convey a sense of movement and triumph that's utterly breathtaking. These masterpieces, among others, make the Louvre a sanctuary for art lovers, historians, and curious minds alike. So, 
What does the Louvre represent today? Well, it's undergone quite a transformation. The glass pyramid entrance, a modern addition in 1989, starkly juxtaposes the Renaissance architecture, blending the old with the new. This juxtaposition is a fitting representation of the Louvre itself, a museum that houses ancient masterpieces while embracing the contemporary world. Today, the Louvre holds the title of the world's largest art museum, a sprawling complex of nearly 780,000 square feet. Its vast collections attract millions of visitors each year, making it the most visited museum globally. From the Venus de Milo to the Mona Lisa, the Louvre is a treasure trove of human creativity, offering glimpses into different cultures, eras and minds. The Louvre, a fortress turned palace turned museum, stands today as a testament to human creativity and our enduring love for art and history.